tonight because I was so, saw Tom a lot. And when, you know, we were doing the scene where Colonel Tom guides Elvis around the, the Vegas showroom. We were rehearsing, we were in rehearsal clothes. And um, Austin, and all the girls are kissing Elvis, you know, Austin. And we were practicing how to do that. And my first AD came over and he said, I think Tom has that flu. Oh. And you and no one know what happened next. Yes. And there was a good th few months when the film was absolutely over. Absolutely over. Uh, you know, you can't hold a cast like that together. You can't keep everybody together. And uh, Tom and Rita had it, and they were, they actually suffered, and they were they were the first persons to get that. Well known, you know. And they went back, and should we do it, and hold everyone together. And I was just remembering to seeing Tom there a minute ago that we rang Tom and we were like, oh, maybe we should wait until February when this is all over. Yeah. 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 And there was a moment I told Austin, and then Austin, instead of Austin like giving up, he just refused to believe it, and he kept just working harder and harder and harder. More dance. All that. And then I, I rang Tom and said, look, I've had time to rethink the first day. We got talking about Colonel and all of that. And we just decided in that moment, if we don't do it now, you never know. And so Tom very bravely came back. And actually from that moment on, it was a very smooth shoot because I think we realized that we were in a privileged place during the pandemic to be working on something important and something that when the pandemic was over, that maybe people might just need. And being here in Memphis and opening it, I really feel that. That, that the, the collectively, we've been working on something that may be out there in the world the way it is, the world might just need this. So, yeah. um, so any questions? <laughs> None, good, I can go. <laughs> no, yes, sir. What's yes, your sir. name? My name is Kerry, and I'm an independent filmmaker myself. And the attention to, to detail in this film is amazing. I was wondering how much time and how hard was it to get all of those moves down? Because they it, it looks like you just recreated all of these scenes almost perfectly from the concerts and all. I, I'm, Kerry, I'm really glad you asked that. Because unlike any other film I've done, I had to begin with certain slices of reality. Now, what I mean by that is... I had to go, okay, come back special, right? And of course, one had to recreate that perfectly so that we could also look behind the curtain and say, well, what happens with Elvis when he's, when he's at, waiting to go on? Or what really happened, you know, afterwards? But to recreate these slices of reality, there's Austin working with Polly Bennett, shout out to her. She's a, a, a movement director coach. She worked with Remy Malik to get the Freddy going. And, and her and Austin would work day and night in the dojo, just absorbing, copying, absorbing, copying. But also, to give you an idea, with the camera moves, our my camera team would study exactly how the television shots were done. The extras, for example, who I like to call support actors, we matched, yeah, I mean, really, really, like, they, I mean, there were parts, there were part acting, there was a team called the Scream Queens, we called them, yeah. right? because there was a small group of girls taught to how to be truly hysterical, but also do stunts. But then, I'm telling you, the long play of, say, the Vegas scene, we shot so much more than's in the movie. And Austin would come out. Now, I've had with me a, a guy who does grip. He moves the camera around with his hands. He worked with me 30 years. And he said about 10 words to me in 30 years. <laughs> and we're doing the Vegas showroom. And Austin does the full numbers. We did all of some numbers, and we did other ones that are not in the movie. And in between, we didn't stop rolling. So he continued as Elvis, doing the jokes, everything he learned from it. And we finally called cut in one of the long takes. And Brett is this guy's name, because he says, oh, boss. He calls me boss, he says, boss, uh, I've done the Star Wars, and I've worked on the Superman and the Thin Red Line. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. He said, how is this happening? I said, 
I don't really know, Brett. Just lots of work on you. It was that incredible. And you know the comeback scene you're talking about with detail? That was Austin's first scene that we shot. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was awesome. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, I will go, I will go, let me go there, because you're up in the channel, then I'll come here, I'll definitely come here next. So, for you, sir, and then we'll come here, I promise, okay? But it just said, the way you leapt out of the chair like that, how could I deny you? That's what I look for on the set. Go ahead, okay. First of all, I, I think I can speak for everybody, thank you so much, we've been wanting something like this forever. It's unbelievable. Um, an all of us die hard kind of freak Elvis fans. Yeah. 1977 means as much to me as it did 1956. His voice was so powerful and he was still, and he was human, which really communicates with us, I think. I know that's been resisted in the past. Did you face any resistance to uh, present Elvis from 1977 with that incredible song? And what, what caused you to go ahead and go that direction? Because I just want to thank you so much for doing it. My friend, thank you. Okay, that is such a great question. It's interesting, I'm working with the press now and they ask interesting questions. But as fans, because you know the life so well, sometimes you go straight to the heart of the matter. And I will tell you, there was a lot of fear about that. Because, understandably, if you are on the outside, you say, that is not Elvis. There's that great quote, Elvis always took care of his appearance. And he was not... The body was not in the greatest place. But I felt there was no other way but to put that moment on film as the last moment. Because in that performance, without a doubt, when you see him, you know, he is not at his best, he is physically not good, he's not long before he's gone. But he sings maybe the best he ever sings. And when that voice soars, and you know the moment I love? When he looks, and Austin did it well, he's like this, you know, and he looks and he smiles like a little boy. Yeah. Like he did when he first went, he smiles like a little boy, like, I'm doing well, right? Yeah. And you know that the soul and the spirit, the body may be corrupted, but the soul and the spirit is soaring and alive. And how can you go anywhere else but that as the last moment? So we walked through it. And eventually it was a yes, and it was like, do we use the real footage? But you know what? The real footage is very difficult to use. And Austin said, I can do it. And it's Elvis's voice, but Austin acts that. Everybody on the stage is an actor. And then, of course, right at the last moment, spoiler alert, don't do it, friends. There's a little surprise, you know. But thank you for that, because that, that was, everyone, everyone had to be brave to go there. Because I know what you mean. Unless you show that, that, that isn't the end result. The end result is that the voice, it's like he says in the footage. You know, so I just keep singing the song, you know, and the voice brings the spirit and it goes on, you know. And it still goes on. And it still goes on. I don't know where to go after that. <laughs> uh, but just, just, just like Jeff said, thank you, first of all, first and foremost, just thank you so much for doing this. And, you know, for someone like me, of course, he saw him in 77 at that time. and. I am 18, and I first discovered him in 2016. And funny enough, that's actually the first thing I saw was was that footage, was that chain mount. That was my first impression. It wasn't a movie, it wasn't anything like that. And I'm so glad, like you said, that you included that because I thought, you know, if he could capture me with a little phone screen like that at that point in his yeah. life, God, man, how amazing it was. And, well, and can I ask, what, sorry, what was your name? Never. Never, what is it? Yeah, that's an amazing story because yeah. many people here would have known, you know, the, the, the rebel elders. Yeah. They would have known, you know, it's easy when someone's young and vital. But what is it that you saw on that phone in that moment? What is it that affected you? What, what touched you? Um, well, there's a few things. There's a lot that was going on in that video. But, uh, um, you know, first, I liked him immediately when the stage came out and all that. Of course, he, like you said, he was at a different point in his life, his walk, his attitude, everything when he walked on stage was just different. But it was still Elvis. He still had that spark in his yeah. walk, like you said, even though there was a lot happening mm -hmm. off and on stage. And I immediately drew to that because those fans, you know, that were there, you know, in mm -hmm. Sun Records, that were there in 16, they were still there. And then you saw those kids that, um, that were just becoming fans. But I became a fan when... Uh, 
uh, when I heard him sing I'm Right Thou Art, that was that. Yeah. Dude, that's what got This is spiritualness, I think. Right, and it's, and it, you know, however you want to put it, like you said, he wasn't long before he passed, but you could feel everything going into it, and I never connected to an artist that way, hmm. to a song that way, or to spirituality that way. He put all three together for me. Well, that is beautiful. Um, I see you're on the younger side of the fan department. Right. Um, you know, given that it was four years ago. But you know what? This film, well, this film is for fans, yes. But this film is also to open the gate so that to bring a new audience, people that you know, and going out there too. Well, I made this movie for one thing. I make theatrical films and I make them for the theater. I make them for the cinema and everyone in this room, anything you can do to keep this movie Elvis in the theaters, like when we go out in the theaters, this film is not to be seen on a, it can be one day on a phone with takeout like this. But you want to be in a room, a dark room with strangers, all feeling what you felt, all together, because you're not alone when you're with strangers in a big dark theater looking up at a big screen and following a story and being touched, whether you're an Elvis fan or it's the first time you've ever seen this story. And I think that's something I'd ask of everyone in this room, with your fan groups and whatever you've got, you know, like, I know you've got some cousins who says, please don't talk about Elvis, I'm not in Elvis. But I think the most important thing is that we get as many people as possible to go and see this film in the cinema. Because actually, Elvis performed in theaters. And it's the live experience that we try to reproduce. And you know, that I think is a mission. So you're, you're gonna lead the young charge on that, my friend. Thank you, Bill. All on your shoulders. <laughs>